So I used to think I needed this to go backpacking. Okay, so I'm exaggerating a little bit. Um, I have never taken my Rambo 3 knife backpacking, but I know some people who have taken knives like this. I thought it'd be fun today to have a little discussion about uh, my knife progression, what I'm using today, uh, some knives that I still really like and I keep in my collection in case, uh, depending on what I do. I know this is a really personal subject for a lot of people and a lot of people are very passionate about their knives and whether or not they carry, what they carry. So um, I'm just gonna talk about my favorites and stuff that I enjoy and what I'm using right now and what my current favorite is. So let's start off with some of the uh, early stuff that I started with um, when I first really got into uh, backpacking a while back. Before I started spending money on quality gear and I actually thought that I needed like, you know, a big huge knife in the back country. So I, you know, I started out with this, this one here. This is a Gerber. I honestly don't know what the model is of this Gerber. This is literally something I got at, oh, I want to say Field and Stream or Dick's or something, maybe a Walmart. It's, you know, but it's actually, it's not a bad knife. It's got a nice little coating on it. It's got a nice little edge. Um, but honestly, it has, an, it still has a good edge because I've really hardly used it very much. The, this thing lasted for a little while and you can see there was a time there where I was really into paracord and making paracord wraps and lanyards and uh, yeah so you'll see more of that in some of these knives here but so this um, like I said this one didn't last very long but uh, like I say it's not a bad knife it's it's full tang I did know at least that much at the time to uh, purchase a full tang knife uh, I thought I'd be doing a lot more batoning and, and crazy bushcraft woody type things and really just didn't pan out to do that kind of stuff so uh that is uh that kind of went to the wayside with that one so my next upgrade i uh I felt like it was an upgrade i got this really cool knife from sog and this is like a like a cool military tactical thingy it's pretty awesome it's got like a cool strap on the back it's got a paracord wrapped handle it's a it's a full metal um, blade. And like I said, it's got this, this uh, paracord wrap on it. Pretty cool. And if you look at the blade on this one, you may notice that it's, uh, it's this was a little bit more worn. I actually did use this one quite a bit. And this was in my, uh, my bushcrafty phase where I thought I had to baton every piece of wood that I, that I came across when I was building fires. And nowadays I just don't do that kind of stuff. I, I, I will in the winter, it, it really just depends. But for the most part, I don't find myself carrying this. I did actually take this recently. I took this on my trip to Oil Creek. Uh, you may have watched that video. I carried this in because well, I thought it'd be fun to take the knife in. It was only a mile hike into the shelter and we weren't doing any backpacking. But this thing's heavy, this, you know, it's several ounces and, um, there's really no reason for me to to carry something like this especially in the summer when i'm out there just and i don't even necessarily need to make a fire uh, or do anything with wood or have any kind of wood processing so uh, i find myself carrying this thing less and less but it's it's still a very cool knife i i, I do enjoy having it so it's it's staying in my collection for a while so that was both these knives i think the first knife was like around 25 bucks and that SOG was around maybe 50. So then I decided, well, I thought maybe, you know, more expensive was better. So then I went on to uh, looking at really expensive, cool carbon blades. And that's when I decided to purchase this one right here. This is the SE, uh, this is the SE Azula 2 knife. And I actually still really like this blade because it is super small. It's got micarta scales on it. I did make another paracord <laughs> lanyard for this thing. I made that because it really wasn't long enough handle. I felt like I was gonna kind of lose my grip on it and I felt like that lanyard gave me a little extra something to hold on to. But this one has some wear on it too, on the coating. I did do some, some processing with this. It, it's a neck knife, so I did actually wear it around my neck. I, I actually had it down here dangling. Uh, pretty cool, it's got a nice, uh, I don't know what this uh, plastic plastic uh, sheath is, 
but it's a pretty nice blade. It's got a cool coating on it. Like I said, it's cool. This is a carbon blade though. So I learned really quickly that you have to like oil these things and you have to like take care of them and treat them and, uh, or they will rust. You can't really, you can't let these things get very wet. Well, you know, that doesn't really work out that well when you're backpacking, especially year round and things are going to get wet. And what's the point of having a knife if it can't, you know, expose, be exposed to the elements. So, uh, I, I, I don't know. I, I had a, I had a fetish for these, uh, carbon steel blades. And then I pretty much lost interest in carbon steel blades after that. So, uh, this is still a cool knife though. It'll stay in my collection and, uh, you know, I may break it out every now and then, but you know, as far as, uh, every trip no, I won't be taking this thing on every trip. That's for sure. So as with so many of us, I watched a lot of YouTube and then everybody started talking about these Mora knives. So Mora, 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 Mora. Okay. Mora. All right. Tell me about Mora. Well, they're cheap and they're awesome. And they're these great blades. Okay. So I decided I went completely opposite end of the spectrum from the expensive knives that I'd been collecting. And I went and bought this $15 Mora. Uh, oh, I don't even know what this is called. The Mora something. It's the basic Mora Swedish made steel, stainless steel blade. I did not get the carbon version, but uh, not, not a bad knife. Actually, this is a very cool knife. Uh, it is super sharp. Uh, I've done a lot of cool things with it. Um, not necessarily batoning and stuff, but basic camp chores have been great. Uh, unfortunately, this is not a full tang, so it only goes down to about there. Maybe it's like a three quarter length blade. So, uh, the, the back end of the handle is, is it's not a full tang. So that's kind of sad, but really for the price, Mora's are awesome blades. And this is definitely staying in my collection. Uh, they do make, uh, more expensive ones. They have the Mora bushcraft, things like that. And basically it's the same basic gist, but uh, they're a little bit more, a little bit pricier, a little bit uh, stronger, I guess. Maybe, I don't know, a little bit better quality. I don't, I don't really know, but Moors are great knives. They are, I'd say they're perfect for backpacking. I, I have no, unless you're really trying to cut, cut weight a lot and, um, not a bad knife at all. It's a great price. Works really well. Super nice edge on it. So yeah, Mora, not a bad knife. Before I get to the knife that I use now every day, I thought I would talk about for bonus points. This, uh, I do have a Swiss army knife. Uh, that's just an obligatory, right? You have to have a Swiss army. This actually, I don't even think this is an actual real Swiss army knife. This is like a generic knockoff <laughs> Swiss army, but it's pretty cool. It's got, you know, but it's got all kinds of cool stuff on. It's got, of course, blades. It's got scissors. It's got like a can opener. You know, but do I really need a screwdriver? Well, maybe I might, but I don't know. Do I really need a corkscrew? Probably not. 99.99% of the time, no, I'm not going to need a corkscrew where I'm going. So uh, these are neat. Um, they are pretty light. You can get, you know, all different types of, of, uh, of these new uh, multi tools. You know, um, of course, there's Leatherman tools and there's the original Swiss Army and they make ones with just blades on them. So yeah, there's lots of different options. I, I'm a big fan. They're, they're kind of cool. Um, but in the same vein, I don't know. I won't use most of the stuff on this. So I don't know. And of course there are the super ultra lighters who are like all about, uh, cutting the weight, cutting everything down if they possibly can. So then there's people who basically just carry like a little razor blade type thing. Uh, and I've seen those on lightsmith.com. I still see myself hiking with one of those. Uh, to me, that's kind of useless. I don't know. Uh, I want an actual knife and it, maybe it's just a security blanket thing or it's the old school in me. I just like having a traditional knife. This is the blade that I'm currently backpacking with. I backpacked with it all last year and I probably will be carrying it again with me all of 2020. It is the, uh, mini griptilian from Benchmade. And this is a super awesome knife. I love this knife. It's man. It's just nice quality. It's got a super nice blade. Keeps a great edge. It is super sharp. I got this cool blue color that I love. So if I do drop it somewhere in the woods, I should be able to find it. I've learned my lesson with having green or black. Uh, you know, that's why I got the super bright orange Mora so that I could find it. 
but uh, the blue is not quite as obnoxious, so I like that. This is a fantastic blade, and it's not super cheap. This was about 100 bucks, but uh, the quality of these things, they're made in the USA. They are awesome knives. They got a really nice action. This thing is super, super sharp. I've cut myself on it accidentally maybe five or six times <laughs> just handling it. So uh, you, know, you want to definitely be careful with these things, especially with this access lock that they have. But uh, the action is fantastic, and uh, it just opens and closes really easily. Just super nice. And I just like having a blade like this in my kit, on my person. I don't know. Maybe it's just a, a sense of security type thing. I, I don't really know. Um, but being able to have something like this, you know, you could always kind of have to have a knife, I think. I don't care what anybody says. If I'm backpacking, I'm carrying a knife. And that's just... That's one of those things that I'm, I'm not going to compromise on. I'm, it depends, you know, on, on what knife I might carry, but I am definitely going to take a blade with me in the woods. And, you know, for me to make that decision, that's my decision. That's cool. If you don't carry a knife, you don't want to, you don't, you think it's stupid, that's cool. But if you're looking for a, a nice blade, uh, something that's a folding blade that uh, you could just throw in your pack, it's fairly lightweight, uh, super easy to handle, it has a good quality, good action. You might want to check out the mini grip. It's a, it's a nice blade. I highly recommend it. And uh, I bought this at Smoky Mountain Knife Works, so I think I got a pretty good deal on it at the time. But I think it was around, it was close to 100 bucks still. But you know, you can get these pretty much anywhere. REI carries Benchmade, but uh, really love the Benchmade brand. I have a couple other blades from companies like Spyderco, and I think I have some Kershaw knives and things like that. They're all great. Really, really cool. CRKT is another one that I have. I didn't break all those out for this video, but uh, really just wanted to show off this one because I really like this knife and it's going to be my 2020 carry once again. So there it is, the Benchmade Mini Griptilian for 2020, my backpacking knife. All right, guys, just a quick little video. Just kind of wanted to show you these knives, what I've been using in my knife progression throughout time and what I'm carrying right now. And uh, if you have any questions on any of these knives, uh, shoot me a message and I will definitely get back to you and give you as much info as I possibly can. Thanks so much for watching. As always, be sure to like, share, comment, subscribe. Lots more great stuff coming up. I'll talk to you real soon.